Right. The big issues in the fandom. We're, we're, we're going through them. We're tackling them all here. You know, furry drama, furries and bronies fighting. Uh, we're going through it all. The biggest one, perhaps, right now, the most contemporary one, a woo. Um, we did a very official looking survey. <laughs> This was only part way through. By the end, Legalize had won by three to one. So apparently we've decided to legalize a woo, at least if we're going with the democracy. So. Now I, I realized before anyone pointed out, I screwed up, this is supposed to be a $350 fine. So maybe that was the problem. Alright, so let's tackle some of these other big issues. Subgroups within the fandom, certain subgroups that may be controversial. We'll start with bronies. All right. So bronies within the fandom, these these My Little Pony fans, they actually say that, or when we look at our data, we actually find that bronies are even more picked on, more bullied by the outside world than furries are. So if you think furries have it rough, furry or bronies actually take it a little bit worse. And many bronies say that they find the furry fandom to be a solace, a place where they can be themselves without being judged for being a brony. Fur suitors. Interestingly, fursuiters get bullied more than non-fursuiters, both outside the fandom and within the furry fandom. So fursuiters actually get bullied a lot more than non-fursuiters by furries. Uh, baby furs or cup furs. Now, prior data has suggested that baby furs and cup furs tend to get a bad rap, and a lot of people have a very negative evaluation of them. Despite this, however, when you actually talk to baby furs and cup furs, they tend to say that they don't really feel any more bullied than anyone else. When you look at how much they've been bullied by other furs, they don't seem to feel very bullied. So despite these negative attitudes that furries have towards certain subgroups, the furries seem to play nice, at least in general. And finally, poppy furs. Uh, poppy furs tend to say they've experienced considerably more bullying within the furry fandom than non-poppy furs. <laughs> this might be because if you know 500 furries, you're more likely to know a jerk. <laughs> we haven't tested this, but that's my, that's my running hypothesis so far. Uh, we tend to find the sort of short version of this is that furries tend to play nicely with other subgroups. Very few furries agree that certain groups should be entirely banned or not allowed within the furry fandom. One of the only controversial points here is that some groups in the fandom bring mockery upon themselves. Some furries agree with this, some furries disagree with it. But in general, furries are pretty happy to sort of live and let live. Be whatever you want in the fandom, it's cool with us. Alright, a few years ago we were asked to look at gender in the fandom and issues of sexism within the furry fandom. So we tried in a number of ways to study this issue. And so the, the way to sort of interpret this here, uh, so these are a bunch of different issues, and these are the scores on them. And when the letters are the same between the groups, it means that the groups did not differ significantly from one another. And so we're looking at men in the fandom, women in the fandom, and genderqueer or non-binary furs within the fandom. So the first four points here, everyone kind of agreed the same amount with this. So whether you're a man or a woman or genderqueer or non-binary in the fandom, you feel like you can be yourself, Gender doesn't really come up a lot around other furries. You tend to feel safe with other furries, and you don't score very highly on this idea of not belonging. The flip side of that is you tend to feel like you belong in the fandom. Cool, so so far, no evidence of any kind of sex or gender differences there. We find some differences here when it comes to artwork and pornography in the furry fandom, where we find that women in the fandom and genderqueer non-binary furries tend to say that they're more bothered by the content of art in the fandom, and more bothered by uh, pornography in the fandom, the way uh, sort of males and females are portrayed in artwork. We find for males in the fandom and genderqueer furries, uh, they tend to say that they're more likely to feel that they have to hide being a furry from other people. So more so than women, men tend to feel like they can't be furry in public for fear of ostracism. Uh, men are also more likely than women to say that they feel pressured into romantic relationships and to say that they feel uncomfortable around other furries. And this is the same uh, for genderqueer and non-binary furries as well. Specific to genderqueer and non-binary furries is the idea they're more likely to receive unwanted attention and they feel more shy around other furries. So there's evidence on sort of both sides that there are, or on all sides I guess, that there are some issues that are specific to different gender groups within the furry fandom. All right. Leaving the fandom, I mentioned to you before that we were going to talk a little bit about the kinds of things that might make furries want to leave the furry fandom. The number one reason is poor behavior of other furries. So some specific instance or some, some, some example of a furry doing something that said, you know what, I, I'm, I'm out of here, I can't handle this anymore. So that's the number one reason, and that's fair enough. 
What I really want to look at is this number two reason right here, drama. Because furries like to joke around about drama. We kind of laugh and say, oh, drama, lol, drama, drama, llama. It's part of being the furry phantom. But we ought to take it a little bit more seriously because it's the second biggest reason why furries leave the fandom. So maybe it's worth at least thinking about, well, why does drama happen? What is it? And what can we do to stop it? Because if it's making people leave the fandom, it's not typically a good thing. So we endeavored to study drama and furry fandom. Science. Right. So we, had, we got 300 furries to give us a definition of drama. And we built up a definition from sort of the ground up. What did all of these different definitions kind of have in common? And we were able to extract three common themes that kind of make up the definition of drama. So these, drama is this thing that everyone kind of knows about, but no one can kind of quite put a good definition to it. So here's my attempt to kind of do that. So number one, drama involves some kind of conflict between at least two people. So two people are fighting about something. <laughs> Hopefully not with knives. All right, but two people are fighting about something. The fight is usually trivial, or it's something small that gets blown way out of proportion. Alright. Part three. For it to be drama, it tends to happen in public or online. So, there's some kind of fight, it gets blown out of proportion, and it's now in the public sphere, so everyone's weighing in on it. So these tend to be the ingredients that contribute to drama in a furry fandom. Now, People have said, oh, furries are really, really bad for drama. And we wanted to ask, well, what is it about the furry fandom that might make it right for this kind of drama happening? And there's a few features that might make furry sort of a right sort of powder cake for drama. One of which is that we have a lot of people interacting with one another, both online and at conventions. And they do so with sort of very different backgrounds. So we've got thousands of furries hanging out at one place here all with different religious backgrounds and political backgrounds and educational backgrounds and so you're going to get some fights happening because we're a very diverse group of people. So that kind of makes sense. The second one is that the fandom spends a lot of time online and online is not the most conducive place to have a good productive disagreement. And so the fact that it's predominantly online means that trivial things can get blown out of proportion really quickly. This is especially true for part three here. It happens online. And so your little Twitter spat with one other person could suddenly turn into 5,000 furries bandwagoning on this thing, and suddenly it's now an issue. So, in the interest of trying to be proactive, I could talk a little bit about what sorts of things we might want to consider doing if we want to stop drama in the furry fandom, or at least cut down on it. I'm trying to tackle these three points. First of all, Remember that the fandom is inclusive and diverse. As a result, you're gonna bump into someone who disagrees with you. If you're a conservative, you're gonna bump into a liberal. If you're a Christian, you're gonna bump into an atheist. This is gonna happen, and you may not see eye to eye on things. You can either see it as an opportunity to expose yourself to opposing positions, or just walk away. Just ignore it, you're allowed to do that, you know. Part two. Uh, winning the argument or being right isn't always worth it, especially when it's these little trivial petty manners, sometimes it's not worth it to try to win the fight, especially if it's going to cascade into a huge argument that ends up dividing the fandom or destroying something we all love. Part three, don't air your dirty laundry in public. So if you're going to have a disagreement with someone, don't do it in a public forum. Try not to do it online where everyone can see. If you are the public, don't feed the fuel, don't watch, don't retweet it. Um, I've seen people do this before, where they're at this convention too. I've had people run around saying, "Oh, did you hear that this person's at this con? Why? <laughs> what does it do?" So I think these sorts of things, if we can keep these in mind, we can hopefully help reduce some of the drama in the fandom and maybe keep keep some more people around. Uh, but to clarify, I want to be crystal clear here that not every conflict in the fandom is just trivial drama. There can be legitimate disputes. There can be legitimate problems in the fandom. For these, it's worth going to the authorities or going through proper, proper channels to, to address it. I don't want to say that everything is drama and just walk away and grow up. There can be some legitimate grievances as well. We as a fandom need to learn to be more aware of the differences between a real problem and a trivial matter. All right, enough soapbox lecturing.